It's a young sport made up of young athletes. Not without its veterans, though, and not without its incredibly quick rise in popularity. More than a fad or a way of exercise for these athletes. To them, it's a competition to be the best in a sport that's taking the world by the blade. Last year, they gathered for the first time ever in Downers Grove, and it was a day of first. Heather Lacayo and Derek Kara both put themselves on top, convincingly with dominating sprints in the final stretch. This year, Heather and Derek are back and ready for the obstacles before them. The course that dares them. The other skaters that drive them. Most of all, their achievements, which target them. The Chicago Sun-Times Sports Grand Prix featuring the 1993 Roller Derby Double ISA National Championship Criterium. Presented by Play It Again Sports. Brought to you by Roller Derby, America's skate company. Play It Again Sports with 14 Chicagoland locations. We buy and sell new and used sporting equipment. American Airlines bring the best to the championship. Something special in the air. Lincoln Mercury, the official car and pace car of the championship. Marriott Suites, Downers Grove, the headquarters and official hotel of the championship. The perfect place for year-round family fun. La Beta, the official inline wheels of the championship. Nobody does speed better than La Beta. Twin Cam, Twin Cam bearings, specially designed for inline racing. By Fresca, the tasteful alternative. And the village of Downers Grove, the host and home of the championship. Welcome to the 1993 Roller Derby Double ISA Inline Championships. I'm Jim Blaney, and along with Greg Bliss, we'll be bringing you the action of an event that I think people know what it is, but they have never seen competition like this. Well, that's right. A lot of people think inline skating is just what you do on your inlines down your driveway. We've got world-class athletes, and we also have a mild world-class track. They're going to be doing criterion bike racing on this is a national championship with national caliber athletes. So some of you may be familiar with what the course looks like because you've seen it in the Downers Grove bike criterion, but as far as the event is concerned, the field is very, very strong, and it's going to be something interesting because we've got a lot of great racers here today. Well, you do have a lot of great racers. In fact, you have more racers than you've ever had before. Derek Perra is here. He's been out racing in Holland, and Holland has more racers than they have here in the U.S. Team Rollerblade is here, and they are going to be here with a force. They've got Casey Boudier and a whole bunch of other people with them. Eddie Masker, who used to be with Rollerblade, is there too. We've got a great women's field. Karen Edwards is here, also Heather Lacayo, and Jennifer Rodriguez, just 17 years young. Something else that will play a key factor in today's race, and you can tell from looking around us, that it's raining, it's quite wet, and that'll add more mystery into the mix of what's going to happen today. Before the event started, we had a chance to talk to some of the top men and women entered in today's event. It is a challenging course, because there is one steep upgrade, and then there's a, a great downhill, so if you take up on the upgrade, you know, you could get away, or it could just, it could kill you. It's a, it's a fast course. It's going to be fast because after you, if, when you're coming down the hill, it's like all downhill up to the finish line, and uh, it's going to be a great race. It's going to be a nice finish. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do. I'm going to have to kind of do what they're going to do, because I don't have any teammates. It's going to be a little hard for me, but yeah, I like to keep it to a sprint at the end. Well, I think this has got to be the penultimate race of the year here in America. It's an awesome assemblage of talent here, and um, I just hope to, uh, to do well. In a perfect world, I hope that the race is over by the, the uh, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I hope we're, we're got a clean breakaway at that point. Um, if we don't, then we will be... Lenny and I will probably be trying to keep the pace high and trying to spread the field out to whatever extent we can and uh, protect Heather and let Heather sprint in. She's got stronger sprint than either of us, and so we'll be protecting her to keep her clear for the sprint. Well, to me, this is the biggest event of the year. This is the U.S. Pro Nationals, um, the biggest prize money race, and all the top racers from across the country are gearing for this, they're all going to be here. We mentioned just a second ago that the event is rather new, but the course is very familiar, Greg. It's the same one people who are bike racing fans have seen before. That's right. It's a figure eight. There are actually eight turns on it, two rights and six lefts. And if you're an inline skater, right-hand turns give you fits because you're always going around an oval in a left-hand manner. 
There's also a big hill that's sponsored by Fresca this year that's tough on inline skates because it's load-bearing and it's got a steep grade to it. Let's take a closer look at the course, a graphic example of what this course looks like. The mile-long course is in the shape of a figure eight, winding and twisting its way through downtown Downers Grove, Illinois. The course begins with a steady climb up Main Street into a right-hand turn onto Maple. Then a quick left on the lane gives the inliners a chance to prepare for Fresca Hill, the vertical wall that will truly separate the elite from the rest of the pack. Once atop the Fresca Hill, they'll rejoin Main Street, this time going downhill, giving the skaters a few seconds to restore their energy. From there, the course continues to sway downhill through turn five, the last of two rights, turn six, and turn seven, where the course drops to its lowest descent. At turn number eight, they again rejoin Main Street for the journey uphill towards the start finish line. Today's races will be 15 minutes plus one lap for the women and 20 minutes plus two laps for the men. When we come back, it's time to begin racing. The Roller Derby Double ISA Inline Skating National Championship is just around the corner. Welcome to the Roller Derby Double ISA Inline Skating National Championship, a who's who of inline skating in the U.S. Now let's take a look at a few of today's favorites in the men's race. The first skater is former Olympic speed skater Eric Flame. While Eric Flame, a silver medalist in 1988 at the Calgary Olympic Games in 1500 meters, has led his team to 43 victories in 1992 with a similar number this year. Our next skater from Berkeley, California is a long distance expert, Eddie Matzker. Matzker holds three world and four national records, including the hour mark, 34.8K, and the world 10K mark at 16.19. That is smoking. And topping the field is the defending champion, 22-year-old Team Hyper member Derek Para. He's a member of the 1993 world team along with his teammates. He's also a world champion and the outdoor national bank track champion. He's got long-distance strength, and he's a sprinter as well. And there's the start of today's race. This field is about double what it was last year. It's much deeper, it's international, and it is very competitive. Derek Perra is going to have a tough time repeating on this course with this field. As the men work to establish early positioning, the women's race is about ready to start. Among the elite women's field, a few individuals always seem to pop up. The most experienced is a veteran with over 100 wins, and that's Karen Edwards. Well, Karen Edwards won the 1992 ISA Rollerblade Series 20K Championship, and she's also the 92 Jose Cuervo Triple Crown Champion. Also from the Rollerblade Racing Team, our next skater is 23-year-old defending champion from Stockton, California, Heather Lacayo. Well, she's a California girl. She trains on the hills of San Francisco right now, and she only came to inlining 18 months ago. She's the best sprinter in the field, and she's also a certified skating instructor. Moving on now to a youngster who has made quite an entrance to the inline racing scene over the past couple of years, Jennifer Rodriguez, the 16-year-old with Team Hyper. Well, Jennifer Rodriguez really is an interesting story because she has a unique double. She's a member of the 1993 world team, but she's also an artistic skater and was on the artistic world team in 1992, 93, fourth overall. So it's very interesting that she has that combination. She's also beat Heather Lacayo a couple of times this year. We're poised for the start of the women's race, and yesterday we spoke with Heather Lacayo about what her dream race might be. My dream race would be having all of the top athletes in the world, all the top um, women's speed skaters, and having a nice hard race where the pace was fast the whole time and winning at the end by just a hair. Even though there are separate men's and women's divisions in this race, all the racers are on the course at the same time. You're looking at them go up the Fresca Hill right now, and before this race is over, Jim, this hill may play a part in the outcome of the race. Now, something else that may play a part in the outcome of the race is what goes on on laps 2, 3, and 4, Greg. Well, the Lameda Hotspot sprints, and as you see, there's Doug Glass and Derek Perra sprinting for the finish line right now on the first time through. He picks up seven points, second place five, three, two, one, top five people through on the next two laps. They'll cum those scores and someone will be crowned the Lebeda Hotspot Sprint Champ. And the same thing is true for the women as well. Well, they're going through the bottom half of the course right now and we'll have to see how it all shakes out. 
They're right now in a pack, and once they come up off that last turn, they're going to flatten out and sprint for the start-finish line, which is the green lap. Let's see how the action goes. It looks like Heather Lacayo is out in front, and Jennifer Rodriguez shadowing her, which is kind of her strategy throughout the race. So this is the portion of the course where it starts to head a little bit uphill as you head back toward the start-finish line, and they head up Main Street and Downers Grove, and it's a really a pretty tough way to start and finish a lap heading uphill like this. Exactly right. You can see that mass sprint to the finish for that first cream. Seven points going to, looks like Heather Lacayo. She's across the line first. So Heather, last year's champion, just like Derek Perra, winning lap number one. Team Hyper also got the seven points for the Labeda Hot Spots Challenge on lap two. Bobby Kaiser led going through, and here we are in lap three, and Team Hyper takes it once again. Derek Perra comes away with two firsts and a second, a total of 19 points. And so he is the Labeda Hot Spots Sprint Champion as you see Philippe Foulard lead out the next lap for Team Labeda. The Labeda Hot Spots Sprints are over for the men, but it's still up for grabs in the women's race. This is lap number two, and you see Linnea Lindgren heading towards the line. She's leading the pack. They're about 10, 15 yards back, and she goes to the blade. She's got all 10 wheels on the pavement. And here come the rest right behind Heather Lacayo as well as the rest of the field, and Lakayo is just going to power up and right by her. She's kind of leading her out. Jennifer Rodriguez right behind. 20 feet ago, Heather Lakayo looked out of it. Well, she's going to step out again right here. She's only taking those pulls right at the finish line when it really counts for the Labeda Hot Spot Sprint. She's asking somebody else to lead right now. Now let's flip back up to the men's race for a little while. Their sprint is over with. Now it's time for a little strategy. Well, Jim, the big question is, can Derek Perra, who just won the Labeda Hotspot Sprints, actually win the race and defend his title? We know he's great. He's the 1992 world champion at 200 meters, 300 meters, 10K, and also at 100K. But does he have the strength to do it here once again? He's out front. Simply incredible that someone can dominate all those different distances because in other sports where the races go different distances, you don't see same guys dominate, but Derek Perra is certainly the all-around champion of the sport. Well, that's what made him a champion in the Criterium Championships right here last year. Let's go back to the women's side of things. This is the final Labeda Hot Spot Sprint Slap. And you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, Jim, that Team Rollerblade is really going out in front and trying to control this last lap. And what they want to do is get Heather Lacayo to the front for the final Labeda Hot Spot Sprint Lap. That's exactly what they do. Heather Lacayo grabs all 21 first plate points. She wins the Labeda Hot Spot Sprints. When we come back, we'll have the conclusion of the Roller Derby Double ISA Inline Skating National Championship. But first, here's a look at the results of the Labeda Hot Spot Sprint. The women's race has just entered its final lap. They're making their final trip up Fresca Hill. Jim, this hill is a very strategic point in the race. You just don't know how much it's taken out of the skaters. There you see Maria Dapas out in front with Karen Edwards right behind. You can just see as the racers go up the hill for the final time how hard it is to get up that hill. But from here on, really, it's pretty much downhill, although there is a little uphill grade at the finish line. Well, that's just it. Somebody's going to make a break away, and it looks as though it's Heather Lacayo right now, and Jennifer Gonzalez trying to cover on that break. And it's going to be very difficult for anybody to catch Heather Lacayo, as we saw in the hot spot sprints. Nobody could catch Heather Lacayo, so certainly Heather Lacayo has the advantage right now. Heather Lacayo, Jennifer Gonzalez chasing her down there through the last turn, and it looks like the whole pack is reconfigured. What you see on your screen now are some of the stragglers from the men's race. It is a pack, and it is a pack sprint to the finish. And it works out to Heather Lacayo's advantage, because everybody else a lot of traffic to go through as Heather Lacayo comes to the finish line first. She is the champion. Heather Lacayo repeats as Roller Derby Double ISA Criterium Champion. Now let's go back out to Fresca Hill where the men have about three and a half laps to go. Derek Paris still leading, but looking a little spent all of a sudden. Well, Derek Paris looking around at Chad Hendrick, who's sticking to his skates like glue right now. It looks as though they've broken away from the main pack. And that's bad for Derek Perra, as you can see the difference. It's about eight seconds right now as they come down the backstretch. Derek Perra had to do an awful lot of work on each one of those Labeda hotspot sprints, and I don't know how much he has left, even though he is a very strong long-distance skater. 
And he has a big lead, but remember, things can change quickly, especially with the difficult Fresca Hill, where people can make up ground in a hurry if they've got strength left at this late stage of the race. It's decision time right now, Jim, for the chase group. And leading out that chase group right now, KC Boudier, he may be taking things into his own hands as they come to Fresca Hill. Well, really, Greg, these guys can't wait too much longer. Somebody's got to make a move now, or Derek Pair is going to get away. It looks like KC Boudier is making his move right now. Boudier comes through and powers up Fresca Hill. He goes right by Para and Hedrick. And who can go with him? That's the big question right now, or can he stay away on his own? What a strong move by KC Boudier. You know, a lot of times that can be an easier place to pass if you've got some strength left because no one's expecting it. People expect just to kind of get to the top of the hill and wait for a downhill to take off. But now KC Boudier is starting to lay it out and starting to build up a little bit of a lead as he tries to pull away from the pack. Jim, it looks as though Chad Hedrick from Team Ultimate is the only one who's going to answer the move by Boudier right now. You know, Boudier is an interesting story out of Tacoma, Washington. He trains in Fort Collins and uh, does a lot of mileage, 20 to 25 miles a day. And he's a great friend of Chad Hedrick, who's uh, no stranger to this sport either. Five national championships and the current world junior men's champion. It's really quite stunning how quickly these two guys have moved out in front of the rest of the pack. KC and Chad right now, friends off the racing circuit. KC looking back there. They've made an informal alliance right now to sort of work together and let this race come down to a sprint. You saw KC motioning to Chad, you take the lead for a while. And basically that's maybe what we're going to see for the next few laps. And then when the final lap starts, then we'll really see the race begin. And at that point, it's going to become a question of who's got the better sprint, who can sprint for longer. We really don't know what Chad Hedrick's got left in the tank. But before the race, we talked to KC Boudier. We have an idea what he's planning. What I can do that skaters, some skaters can and some skaters can't do is that I can get up to a top speed and maintain it for about 600 meters at the average. And I can, like, as soon as I take off, I can maintain that all the way to the finish. There's a little more than two laps remaining in the race, so in about two laps, we're going to see somebody make a move. Well, I think both of these men have energy conservation on their mind. They want to have as much in the tank left when it comes down to that final sprint. Chad Hedrick right there taking that corner. The chase group, way back. Derek Parra still leading the chase group. Derek Parra, once again, the defending champion in the race, but it doesn't look like things are going to work out for him today. Well, no, they're just, uh, these guys are dominating this race. They basically know it's either Chad Hedrick or Casey Boudier. And there's a couple looks going back and forth between them. It's like, okay, how much do you have? How much, I know how much I have. And both of those guys, as we see the chase group once again, right in the corner, Derek Parra out in front watching his championship slip away. And as we saw in the women's race, the lead men are starting to move into a little bit of traffic, starting to lap some of the slower racers, so traffic is going to start building up in this final lap. Look at Chad Hedrick. He has his hands on his thighs as he's going up here. He is definitely starting to hurt in his leg. Boudier gliding up. Look at the stride that Boudier has as opposed to Hedrick. Hedrick has shorter legs. He's got to go with a choppier, more strokes going up that Fresca Hill. And, of course, that uses more energy as well. Anybody who can do a little gliding at this point in the race, save some energy for that final sprint, is going to have an advantage. Well, they are gliding, and as you see these people, th that's the second pack. It's Boudier and, right now, Chad Hedrick out there all along. So it's a two-person race. You see them looking back and talking to each other, trying to find out what's going on. The camaraderie is going to stop here pretty soon because we're getting close to the finish and the sprint is about to start. Jim, this is the end of the race right here. They're going through turn seven. There are only 600 yards left in this race. We know Boudier's got a great sprint. He can go at any time now. And that's the advantage of being in second place as Boudier is right now. Hedrick can't see when Boudier is going to make his move. Boudier may be thinking about using Hedrick as a slingshot and going outside. But check this out. Boudier goes to the inside and takes Hedrick. Certainly something Hedrick was not expecting. And look at how strong KC Boudier is sprinting to the finish line. Heading uphill a little bit here on Main Street in Downers Grove. KC Boudier is the champion. He is the winner of the Roller Derby Double ISA Criterion Championship. Just like stay in front of that See if we can like... After a quick timeout, we'll have post-race awards coverage and we'll talk with today's winners. It's all coming up. There you see our victory circle here at the 1993 Roller Derby Double ISA Inline Skating National Championship Criterium.
Now let's hear what today's winners had to say after the race. How tough is it to repeat? Oh, it, the pressure is so much more intense when you're the winner coming in. I mean, everybody was keying off of me, and I could tell that in the race. I had to take charge and start just say, telling people what to do. I mean, someone would go on the outside, I'd say, hey, to the right, and to get people to stop keying off of me the whole time. It worked out real well. We talked about your dream race yesterday, and pretty much your dream came true. Yeah, it did. It was great. A lot of fast skating and the dream laps helped out a lot. I was moving up down the, down the finish line stretch and I, I thought, you know, maybe I'll try a break and get everyone tired. And it was a break that stuck. I took off on the, the steep upgrade and just hammered down the hill and Chad was back there, you know, just hanging on. So I decided to let up and maybe we'll both work together and go for the win. I, I did a little, little tactical move, you know, act like I was tired right here. He pulled through, I stuck him to the last straightaway and nailed it on the corner before he did and brought it to the finish line for the win for Rollerblade. Inline skating is a relatively new event, and in keeping with that, Greg, we saw a lot of young people getting involved and young people showing their people to be reckoned with in their sport. Yeah, and this national championship, it really was a coming out event for KC Boutier, Chad Hedrick, and Jennifer Rodriguez. A great day for them, a great venue, and I look for better things from them in the future. Certainly, you look at this sport, and there's only one way it can go, and that's up, because it gets more popular every moment. For Greg Bliss, I'm Jim Blaney. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next year. Chicago Special Events Management, parent of Event Crafters, and Mission Reef is a quality event marketing and production company. Chicago Special Events Management is the proud producer of the 1993 Roller Derby Double ISA Championship Criterium.